Hi everyone, I'm Priyanka Prakash, Senior Staff Writer at Fundera. Today I'll show you how to fill out IRS Form 2553, Election by a Small Business Corporation. The most common use for this form is for a limited liability company, LLC, or C Corporation that wants to be taxed as an S Corporation. If you correctly complete and submit this form on time, the IRS will treat your business as an S-Corp for federal income tax purposes. This means the profits and losses of your business will pass through to the owner's personal tax returns and the business itself will not pay an income tax. Now before you even fill out this form, you should make sure that you meet the requirements for electing S-Corporation tax status. There's a long list of requirements that you can find in the IRS guide that accompanies this form, but the main requirements are that your company can have no more than 100 shareholders, only one class of stock, and no non-resident alien shareholders. Okay, let's get to the form now. Part 1, Election Information, starts with some basic business information, such as your business name, address, and EIN number. If you currently have an LLC which does not have an EIN number, you'll need to apply for one first using IRS Form SS4 before you fill out this form. I'm going to provide this information for a sample business called ABC Bakery. which is an LLC. And I'll assume that ABC Bakery does have an EIN already. Next you'll provide the date and state of incorporation. That wording makes sense if you're currently a C corporation, but it's a little misleading if you're filling out this form as an LLC because technically you're not an incorporated business. However, what this is getting at is simply the date that you registered your business with the state or filed your articles of organization or articles of incorporation. In this case, let's say that ABC Bakery registered with the state on January 5th, 2018, and they registered in New York State. After applying for an EIN, if your business changed its name or address, you would check off the applicable box in item D. If not, skip this item and move on to item E. Item E is important because you'll need to provide the tax year in which your S-Corp election is to take effect. If you meet all the requirements for an S-Corp, you should file Form 2553 no later than two months and 15 days after the start of the tax year in which you want your election to take effect. That is March 15th for most businesses that follow a calendar tax year. You can also submit the form at any time during the preceding tax year. Let's say that's the case for ABC Bakery LLC and that the owner wants the S-Corp election to take effect in 2020. In item F, choose your business's tax year, which for most companies will just be an ordinary January 1st to December 31st calendar tax year. You might choose a fiscal year if you have a seasonal business uh, in which the tax year ends on a day other than December 31. For item G, remember that you can't have more than 100 shareholders in an S corporation. However, you can treat spouses or members of the same family as one shareholder for the purposes of this count. If that's how you'll be counting certain shareholders, check off this box next to item G. In item H, provide the name and title of the business contact person. For most of you watching this video, that's probably you who is filling out the form. In our example, we'll say that the business contact person is Betty Business, who's the CEO of ABC Bakery. You should also provide the phone number. Item I is where you would provide an explanation if you are filing Form 2553 after the deadline. In order for the IRS to accept your late filed Form 2553, you have to provide reasonable cause for the delay. 
For example, maybe you did not understand the rules about the deadlines or your accountant failed to file on time. The IRS will often accept such explanations as reasonable cause from a small business. At the bottom of the form, don't forget to sign, date, and provide the title of the officer filling out the form. You can't sign and date until you print out the form, so I'm going to leave that blank for now and just provide Betty Business's title. Before you continue, make sure that on the next page you provide your business name and EIN again at the top so the IRS doesn't lose any of your paperwork. In this table, you'll enter the name and address of each shareholder who's required to consent to your S-Corp election. Your corporate bylaws or operating agreement should identify who is required to provide consent, but in most cases you'll need approval from all current shareholders or owners of the business, and they'll need to sign the form in this section. If you need more rows than what is provided on this form, simply print out additional copies of this page. Most of you watching this video will probably just fill out a few of these lines. Now if you're structured as an LLC, you don't have shareholders, you have members of the business, and you would provide their names and percentage of ownership instead of share information in this section. In this case, I'm going to assume that Betty and her business partner, Chris Corporate, are the only two owners of ABC Bakery, and they have a 60-40 ownership split. Here I'll provide information for both of them. I'll assume that Betty Business acquired her percentage of ownership on the day that ABC Bakery was formed. And I'm going to provide her social security number in column M. This last column is most important if the shareholder or owner is a company. If it's an individual, the tax year almost always ends on December 31. And that's it for the table in this case. You'd also want to remember to have both Betty and Chris sign here. Part 2 of Form 2553 applies to businesses that follow a fiscal tax year. You'd only fill out this section if you chose to check off either Box 2 or Box 4 in item F of part 1. This might apply to seasonal businesses or to businesses whose primary shareholders follow a fiscal tax year. But most of you watching this video will follow a calendar tax year and you can skip this part. Part 3 of Form 2553 applies only to businesses that are electing qualified subchapter S trust election under section 1361D2 of the Federal Tax Code. In order to qualify for this election, you must have a trust which is a qualified shareholder of your business. In addition, corporate stock must have been transferred to the trust on or before the date on which the business makes its election to be treated as an S-Corp. Most of you watching this video will skip Part 3. This part is more applicable to larger companies who have trusts as shareholders. Lastly, we come to part four. As long as you're filling out this form on time, you can skip part four. If you missed the deadline, however, then you're agreeing to each of the representations that's listed in this part. And that's it for form 2553. You can mail or fax the form to the IRS as indicated for your state on the cover page of the form. There's no fee to file Form 2553 and the IRS should notify you within two months whether your S-Corp tax election was accepted or not. Now that you're an S-Corp for tax purposes, you'll eventually need to file Form 1120-S, which is the informational tax return for S-Corps, and you'll need to provide a Schedule K-1 to your shareholders. Keep in mind that you might also need to fill out additional paperwork with your state in order to be treated as an S-Corp for state tax purposes. 
If you'd like additional help in filing Form 2553, we suggest using a legal help service such as LegalZoom. When you form your company on LegalZoom, you'll be prompted to specify whether you would like to elect S Corporation tax status. If you choose yes, LegalZoom will file Form 2553 on your behalf for an additional fee. We hope this was helpful in filling out Form 2553. Head over to fundera.com slash blog for more small business information and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching everyone.